If you know me, you also know how much I absolutely love gradients. And it's not just me, it's 2024 and gradients seem to just be everywhere. I recently came across this beautiful website by Authkit and one thing I really loved about it is these animated gradient border effects on these containers. And I immediately thought I have to learn how to replicate this with Tailwind. And after that, of course, I have to share it with my gradient bros. That's you, by the way. So in just a few minutes, you're going to learn how to create these beautiful animated gradient border effects. Now, you can do many amazing things with Tailwind and CSS, but unfortunately, it's not quite straightforward to animate gradient borders. So to achieve this effect, you need to be a little bit creative and apply a few tricks. So before we dive into coding, I want to quickly show you how this works. We're going to start with a single div element. It's going to be our wrapper. Within that element, we're going to create an artificial element using the CSS before pseudo element. And we're going to style it to look like a conic gradient that is perfectly centered. We're going to use CSS animations to make it spin 360 degrees to get that sonar effect. And within that, we're going to spawn a child element. And that is where the content for our card goes. Notice that the background of this element is slightly darker. And that is because we are going to create an artificial border loop. And with a conic gradient spinning 360 degrees, we get that beautiful effect. All right, so let's get to coding. I mean, the Tailwind Playground, and you can find all of this code in the description down below. So let's quickly talk about what I have here. I have a container element that spans across the entire screen. It is a flex box, and I just have it here so that everything we do is perfectly centered. Another thing I have here is our wrapper card element. I've given it a 200 pixels width and height. And then within that, we are going to have our card content. And I've also made sure everything here is centered as well. Anyway, remember the card wrapper will actually act as our border and the card content is where the actual content of this card element will go. That's it for HTML, pretty straightforward. One wrapper spanning across the entire screen the actual card wrapper that acts as the border, and then the card content where the content goes. Over to our CSS file. Now, traditionally in the Tailwind philosophy, you want to apply your Tailwind classes directly in your HTML template. And I think it makes sense for a lot of things like the variable things, like whether I want to center the items in my card content or not. But for very repetitive things, that would end up polluting your HTML, I think it makes much more sense to use uh, layers and create utility classes in those. I think this is a great use case. This way, you could easily replicate this effect across your website without having to write a bunch of repetitive, complicated Tailwind classes that nobody really understands. So we're gonna use the uh, utilities layer here, and I've specified three uh, classes that obviously correspond to my HTML elements. And the first one we're going to start with is our wrapper, which is again going to act as our border. So let's apply some classes here. The first thing I want to do is make it a relative position element and give it some background. So I'm going to give it a gradient background. It can be anything. And it's going to go down to the bottom from slate 700 to slate 800. I want it to be slightly lighter than whatever background I'm going to provide here, because again, this is going to act as my border. Now let's make it look a little bit better by rounding the corners. There you go. That's it for now. The next thing and the most interesting thing I think is our gradient. So we're going to head here to this um, card wrapper before pseudo element. So we're using the CSS before pseudo element to basically inject a child element to our wrapper. And the reason we do this is basically to prevent us from having to do something like this, an empty element that is purely needed for styling. And this is, I think, a great use case uh, for the before pseudo element. So we're going to do that. The first thing I'm going to bring here is a conic gradient. You can do many things with Tailwind, many gradients as well, but not a conic gradient for background. So I'm using just vanilla CSS here. It's totally fair game. Now, we cannot see it yet, and that's because we need to apply some styling to this container in order to see it. 
So we're going to start by setting the height to 100% and the width to 100% as well. And in order for us to see a before pseudo element, it needs to have some content. And the way you do that with Tailwind is just this. This is going to apply some basically empty content. Now, we still cannot see it, so we're going to set the position to absolute. All right, so we have our Koenig gradient rendered here on the screen, and some of you may already realize where we're heading with this. Now, the next thing we need to do is make it spin to achieve that sonar effect you saw earlier. So in my Tailwind configuration, I've added this keyframe called border spin that basically has one keyframe and rotating 360 degrees and then an animation that uses that keyframe and over seven seconds will infinitely loop through that keyframe. So basically an endless spin. And once we have that in our Tailwind config, we can say animate border spin. And there you go, it's spinning. Now, if you're sharp, you're gonna see that our Kony gradient does not always cover the entirety of the wrapper element. So in order to fix that, we're gonna say height 150% and width 150%. This will make it big enough but now it's not centered. And we're gonna fix that as well by saying go 25% to the left and minus 25% up top. Oops, minus here. There you go. So now it's centered. We've basically compensated for these extra 50% by saying minus 25%. So now we have a perfectly centered Kony gradient that spins around and always covers the entirety of the wrapper element. Now there is one issue here, and that's the Kony gradient exceeds the boundaries of the wrapper element. To fix this, we're simply going to apply the overflow hidden tailwind class here. There you go, beautiful sonar. Now the last thing left to make this complete is to style the card content element. So we're going to apply a few tailwind classes here. Let's start with width 100%, height 100%. Let's give it a gradient background as well. And remember, I want this to be darker than whatever gradient or color I've used in my wrapper, in my fake border, um, because otherwise you wouldn't be able to see the, the, the border very well. So to slate 900 and let's round these corners as well. Awesome. And in order to see this position, absolute. Great. Okay. We're almost there. Problem is this wrapper currently spans across the entire element, but we want to see one pixel of that border of that wrapper element. So the way we're going to do this is instead of saying width 100%, we're going to calculate it to be 100% minus two pixels. And same here, both in the width and the height, minus two pixels. So this is what we end up here. The only thing left really is to center it. And since we have set the width and height to 100% minus two pixels, all we have to do is to push that content one pixel to the right and one pixel towards the bottom, and it would fix that. So top one pixel and then left one pixel. And there you go. That beautiful effect that we're after looks absolutely stunning. Now, let me quickly show you how you can customize this even more here in the Kony gradient definition in that third parameter, uh, the transparent part, you have an amount of degrees and that will dictate how big slash slow the effect will be or how small or subtle it will be. So if I set this to 40, you're going to see that the effect becomes very, very uh, subtle. The gradient itself is very small. 20 is going to be even smaller, whereas 100 is going to be bigger. So that's one part that you can customize. The other part is to adjust the alpha channel or opacity of these gradients. You can say 0.2 to get something that's barely visible. Or you could say 0.5 to make it even more visible. And that's it. All right, folks, I hope you liked it. You know, I'm not a CSS guy, but just seeing this gradient, I immediately wanted to replicate it. And I think the cool trick with the child elements is pretty neat and a nice thing to know as a developer anyway. Let me know what you think in the comments. And if you like this kind of content, subscribe to the channel. It's pretty new, but I'm gonna upload a bunch of content you're probably gonna like. I'm gonna talk about front-end, back-end, infrastructure, AI trends, developer career growth, and whatnot. So thanks for being with me today, and I hope to see you next time.